company from Austria. It's actually quite funny how we found that case because the, the Austrian national television broadcaster and the Austrian newspapers were, were writing about the case where AI is used in a winery or in a vineyard. And uh, the only company name that was mentioned there was Microsoft. So when we contacted Microsoft, we did, they, they further referred us to the actual company doing this. And which is uh, Tieto Every, and yeah, Johannes Strassmeier is the person which carried out the project. So it's our special pleasure today to, to welcome Johannes with us on the stage. So let me remove this one. And hi, Johannes. Hi, Clemens. Hi, everybody. Hi, Pia. Hi, Johannes. Thanks for for the introduction. Yes. Uh, funny story, and I'm I'm happy that uh, you found us, and uh, even Microsoft mentioned us, so that I can be here today and present our case. I'll share the screen, and you can tell me once that's working. Yep. Perfect. Oh, All right. right. This is uh, perfect. So yeah, the stage is yours. See you later in the Q and A. Yes, thank you. All right. Um, as mentioned before, uh, the project that I've been working on is about saving the wine. And um, saving the wine is necessary because uh, the world is in a process where the climate changes. And this has a negative impact on the blossoms of, for example, wine trees and and um or uh, apple trees, apricots, whatever it be, because the frost destroys the blossoms. And without um, healthy blossoms, there is no possibility that uh, grapes grow or that fruit grows. And um, that's that's a big issue. And not only about the wine, but in general, uh, fruits in all over the world. Um, let me explain the, the thing, what's going on here. It's that um, in, the, in the past, before climate changed, uh, the temperature did arise usually from January till May up to a certain degree. Don't take that numbers too, too uh, seriously here. It's just a, a sketch. Uh, and let's say the flowering phase was from April to May, somewhere around then, depending on, on the grape or on the tree that, that was uh, growing the, the blossoms. Um, but now that average temperatures uh, increased and uh, the flowering phase moved to an earlier stage within the year uh, after winter. And that's bad because there is one, one uh, process happening in, in temperature that is called late season frost. So it can happen that suddenly during nights the temperatures decrease significantly and uh, this might destroy the, the blossoms from the trees. And we end up in the uh, dead blossoms that won't grow any fruits. So this is, this is the problem. This is why we sat together and uh, built the project. And um, we saw that there is an estimated uh, damage to Austrian vineyards and fruit orchards only from 70 million euros, euros in 2017. That's maybe uh, that's a, a, a serious number for Austria, but that's not only, on, not only in Austria, but that's worldwide. For example, there are numbers from France um, that say that the human caused climate change um, has made the damaging frost events in France 60% more likely, and the things are getting worse. So. Actions have to be taken, and uh, the, the wineries and all the farmers are taking countermeasurements already. Because, I mean, they, they noticed the problem in the last, let's say, 20, 30 years already. Um, and they, they invented some, some actions that they perform, but they are cost and time intensive. I'm going to uh, show a few examples. So on the left here, you see a uh, lit up vineyard where the, the, the farmer put up so-called ovens uh, that they ignite and they burn for around eight hours. And they do this when they know that the temperature is very low and that the trees would be 
in danger. But the problem is, when is the right? Uh, is it is it going to be cold? Too cold that night? Um, and do I need to do that because it's it costs a lot of money, and it costs a lot of time. And um, one other possibility that they they are taking is uh, artificial irrigation. So they they start to water the trees, and that um, creates then from the frost a uh, protective um, um, ice over the blossoms. And on the next day, everything is is fine again because the protective shield kind of um, stops the the weather from getting uh, from the change from the uh, fast temperature change, which actually kills the the blossoms. Other actions are to blow warm wind from higher areas to the ground so that the trees also have um, a warmer air. Or, which is uh, which I couldn't even believe, was that they start helicopters and also blow down warm air to the ground if they know that it's getting too cold. And as you can imagine, there's also uh, protective roofs. Uh, but as you can imagine, that's very um, time and cost intensive for the farmers. Then it um, it's it has a negative impact on the environment. And uh, if the farmers are uh, insured, then the insurance companies also do have an interest to reduce the, the damages to the trees. So the overall goal, of course, is to reduce the damage uh, to the trees and um, to increase the harvest for the farmers so that there are blossoms and grapes and, and fruits. So as, we, as I said, we sat together and we wanted to find a solution on how to um, how we can help the farmers and um, uh, the the trees to keep the blossoms and to to stay alive and uh, deliver a harvest a good one. And we we soon found out that it's not only about the technology that is in that uh, field necessary, but we also need research. We need the farmers. We need the insurance companies. And since it's a, a, a project of general interest, we also involved the Federal Ministry of Agriculture in Austria to give us some funding. So um, we brought that people together. We sketched uh, a prototype for the for the project and uh, then implemented it. And the the, the solution that came out was it's. Uh, an end user application on the one hand that gives the farmers the possibility to know exactly what's the temperature on which uh, vineyard at which location um, and what's the, the humidity and even more interested what is the temperature going to be within the next night and from that um, information the farmers then can take uh, they do know do I have to take an action and do I have to, to set up the candles and the ovens? Do I have to order a helicopter or do I have to start the wind wheels? And to make that possible, um, yeah, we uh, put up sensors on the fields of the wind yards. Um, that, that sensor data is then gathered into our uh, backend solution. It, uh, that solution provides the data to the National uh, Institute for Meteorology that creates the forecast. This is where the AI happens, uh, where I come later to. And then we provide that data <clears throat> to the to the farmers. And on the right, you see that's the, the end user application for the mobile phone. But it, of course, it also can be used on a regular desktop. And I will show it in a minute. Um, but what, what we are also doing is we are sending alerts to the farmers. So they don't have to uh, like uh, check the, the temperature every 10 minutes or every hour as they used to, um, but they simply can sit back and relax and wait for a notification or not uh, not waiting for the notification um, until it arrives and then they take the actions. You have to imagine, and which is, I, I couldn't believe it when I heard it, the farmers actually um, looked in the TV weather forecast, and then <clears throat> said, "Okay, tonight it's probably going to be cold, so 
uh, they stayed up all night and drove around in their cars to measure temperature and humidity all over their fields um, repeatedly. So they went out there, went from one field to another, got the temperature, and uh, that's, yeah, cost and time intensive. And um, we live in 2022, so there should be a solution for sensors and a notification system that does also proper forecasting. Yeah, and we wanted to create that. So um, we had uh, installed in 2020 the sensors, 300 sensors, that do measure the temperature, the humidity, uh, now wind is in place, and um, also rain, but currently that's um, only a little uh, of little interest. But only from, from humidity and temperature, the most um, actions and decisions can be taken um, as needed. Then a little about the data processing. We also have 21 farmers in the project, which um, gave us the possibility to place their sensors in real environment uh, to, to be able to gather the data, to take that data and, and then create the, the forecast data and, and have real-time values. And they really use the system, so we get real feedback. And only in the first year, uh, we took about 30 million measurements um, and even about uh, four times uh, as many forecast values uh, for that area. It's actually happening in, happening in uh, Lower Austria and Steiermark and distributed over, over the 45 vineyards and orchards. So a little bit about the forecasting system. Um, it's uh, calculated every hour for uh, the next 48 hours. So the farmers not only know what's happening um, in the next night, but also maybe the two nights in uh, from from now, and that helps them also also to maybe reorder new ovens or order the the helicopter in in advance. And the smart thing about the the solution is, or that the necessary thing is, that the the forecast must be as accurate as possible. What we've learned from the first season was that um, if the temperature forecast is only off by, let's say, one degree or even less, the, the farmers complain because then it's not uh, useful for them. So our goal is to increase and enhance the, the, the quality of the forecast as good as possible. And I mentioned that the CMG does that forecasting and they not only take the, the measurements from the sensors that we provide uh, that were put up in the field, but they also take the, the major weather situation that they're responsible for in Austria anyways. So we got, or we think that we got the best possible partner for uh, the weather forecasting in Austria to, uh, to combine their best mo weather models with the data that we provide. All right, let's uh, briefly take a look into the application. I already opened it. So um, you should see now the Frostsat front end. Uh, you see the, the, the dashboard where uh, you see exactly your sensors that you're allowed to see. And here you can see the map and know where the sensors are. Usually you only see your uh, sensors from your vineyard or your chart that you are interested in. And then you go through them and see, okay, that was the temperature, that's the temperature going to be. And I do have to take actions or not. Then um, you can at any point add alerts, as I mentioned. That's a very important thing if you are, um, if you want to have a good rest during the night, you, you're alerted if there is a problem. And so, for example, you can set up an alert for that one sensor or and say, okay, I want to know when temperature is getting below one degree and then please send me an SMS or an email or whatsoever. And um, this will 
then happen once uh, the, the threshold is reached. Yeah, that's that's the, the, the user side from the farmers. Of course, there's a lot of reporting for the scientists in the project that do the research, um, the configuration for the sensors, the management for the for the for the sensors, the fields, and so on and so on. Because it's relevant, of course, where is the sensor mounted, how high above the ground, where is the sensor, what's the sensor type because we also found differences in the sensor type on how uh, good or bad they are and so on. Um, yeah, that's so far about that. Um, in general, the, the, the solution that we created is not only working for, for the Fostrad project, but we have seen as Tietuary that there is a need for such a accelerator platform that does similar things like gathering IoT data, um, connecting uh, systems like the CAMG or the sensor platform from other data providers. Then there is always a need for an API that uh, data from our platform can be pushed to us or can be taken to us. And the reporting, as I mentioned, for the the scientists and the researchers because and that's maybe i think i forgot to mention is one goal of the project is not only to uh, reduce the costs and, and time for the for the farmers or the insurers but um, they want also to know what are the best best actions or counter actions to take against frost because if we find out that the ovens are not very helpful or you would need so many that they are actually helping but uh, the wind wheels are much more cost efficient and this will also be a result of our project uh, as we are comparing the, the data from before and after yeah um, and yeah i said that the, the platform that we created is uh, not only used in agriculture but also in industrial manufacturing or even in retail interest, retail industry to monitor shops. So in future, we believe um, that shops will be monitored in temperature, in, in, in the room in general, or in the, in the fridges, or uh, how is it in the fruit area? How is it somewhere else? How about energy consumption? Uh, there are so many sensors in each and every shop that can help to uh, reduce energy consumption, which is probably one of the most important factors there. And uh, speaking about industrial manufacturing, we have uh, made a project with Wiener Berger where we monitor machines and the product quality that helps us to uh, increase the quality to um, uh, compare and improve the shift performance from the machines and the people working there by simply showing or calculating and showing uh, KPIs in real time and to, in visualize, to visualize the trends that can be derived from that. And yeah, we think that we have done uh, quite an exciting project that helps not only um, uh, people in one area, uh, but also in many others. And uh, I think, or at least I can only talk for me, I really like wine. And if this saves the wine uh, at a very low impact for uh, the environment, then, I've, then I'm happy. To give a short outlook, um, I would like to say that the next steps are that we want to still uh, in enhance the forecast that we produce. We want to implement the feedback and the tips that we got from the farmers because they have to use the systems uh, at the system and uh, user experience is a big topic. And uh, of course, we want to scale uh, the solution as it's built on, on a cloud service from Microsoft. We, we can scale to any area in the world um, if there are the sensors installed and if there is the, the meteorologi meteorological data uh, from that area or country. That's it. Thank you. Um, questions, please. Yes, thanks so much, Johannes. I think that's really a practical hands-on solution um, that everybody can understand that 
quite valuable, I guess, for farmers. Um, as we already are a bit behind time, we would like to, to start with the questions right away. Um, you showed a picture of some of the sensors, but um, the participants wanted to know also which sensors measuring what did you place in the vineyard? Uh -huh. um, yeah, I, I can. It's, it's written in the, in the slides, like the, the producers of the, of the sensors, but I can give a detailed information if people write me. I don't have it like right at hand. Um, so to give, I cannot give the answer right away, but I can uh, answer if people write me. Okay. Or you can also in, um, provide it in the chat of the event, uh, or people can write you directly. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. I have to, I have to add here that um, we are the we, we did the software part of the project. So the company Microtronics is the partner for the sensor setup. So uh, maybe I'll forward to them so they can give the right answers exactly, depending on, on how much detail you need. Okay, thanks a lot. And then maybe we have time for one more question. Um, and there's one from uh, Martin. Since it's a funding project with companies as well as with public partners, how did you organize the co economic utilization of project results? So how did you arrange that in the project? Um, yeah, it was clearly defined what um, what uh, everybody from the partners brought into the project. Or maybe let me first start with, we built a ARGE, which is a working group uh, for all the partners. And uh, then we defined what every company brings in at the start of the project. So as I mentioned, we brought in the, the IoT accelerator platform and uh, then the sensor knowledge was brought in from the sensor company and so on and um, everything that was everything that was made additionally in the project that is then a result and is public knowledge and um, is not cannot be used by any of the companies like Tieto but uh, the rest is public knowledge and yeah I think that's okay. the question that's that's always good if it's available for further use. Well, um, thanks so much, Johannes. Thank you. Yeah, th thanks a lot also for the for joining on short notice. And yeah, if you, the audience, want to get in touch with Johannes, you can always uh, reach out to him uh, directly on the B2Match platform and book one-on-one -on -one meetings. <laughs>